do I look, darling? <laughs> girl bait, sir. Pure bloody girl bait. <laughs> Moustache? Bushy enough? Like a privet head, sir. <laughs> Good, because I want to catch a particularly beautiful creature in this bush tonight. <laughs> I'm sure you'll be combing women out of your moustache for weeks, sir. <laughs> God, it's a spankingly beautiful world. And tonight's my night. I know exactly what I'll say to her. Darling. Yes, sir? <laughs> what? Um, I don't know, sir. Well, oh, then butt in. <laughs> Sorry, sir. I want to make you happy, darling. Well, that's very kind of you, sir. <laughs> Will you kindly stop interrupting? If you don't listen, how can you tell me what you think? I want to make you happy, darling. I want to build a nest for your ten tiny toes. I want to cover every inch of your gorgeous body in pepper and then sneeze all over you. Really, sir? <laughs> I must protest. What is the matter with you, darling? Well, it's just all so sudden, sir. <laughs> I mean, the nest bit's fine, but the pepper business is definitely out. How dare you tell me how I may or may not treat my beloved Georgina? Georgina? Yes. I'm working out what I want to say to her this evening. Oh, yes. Of course. Thank God. <laughs> All right. Yes, sir. Listening, sir. Honestly, darling, you really are the most graceless, dim-witted bumpkin I ever met. I don't think you should say that to us. <laughs> Where the hell's that, George? It's three o'clock in the morning. He should be careful wandering around the trench at night with nothing to protect his honour but a cricket box. <laughs> Hello, Captain. About time. Where the hell have you been? Oh, I don't know. It's all been like a dream, my very first ball. <laughs> the music, the dancing, the champagne. My mind is a mad whirl of half-whispered conversations with the promise of indiscretion ever hanging in the air. Oh, did that old stoat Melcher try for a snog behind the fruit cup? <laughs> Certainly not. General behaved like a perfect gentleman. We tired the moon with our talking about everything and nothing. The war, marriage, proposed changes to the LBW rule. <laughs> Melcher isn't married, is he? No, no, all his life he's been waiting to meet the perfect woman. And then at last, tonight, he did. <laughs> Some poor unfortunate had old walrus face dribbling in her ear all evening, did she? Well, yes, as a matter of fact, I did have to drape a napkin over my shoulder, yes. <laughs> George, are you trying to tell me that you are the General's perfect woman? Well, yes, I rather think I am. <laughs> well, thank God the horny old blighter didn't ask you to marry him. <laughs> he did? Well, how did you get out of that one? Well, to be honest, sir, I'm not absolutely certain that I did. <laughs> what? Well, you don't understand what it was like, sir. You know, the candles, the music, the huge moustache. I, I don't know what came over me. You said yes? Oh, after all, sir, he is a general. I didn't really feel I could refuse. <laughs> he might have had me court-martialed. Whereas, on the other hand, of course, he's going to give you the Victoria Cross when he lifts up your frock on the wedding night. <laughs> and finds himself looking at the last turkey in the shop. <laughs> yes, I, I, I know it's a mess, sir, but you see, he got me squiffy, and then when he looked into my eyes and said, Chipmunk, I love you. Chipmunk! <laughs> yes, but it, it, it's his special name for me, you see. He says my nose looks just like a chipmunk. Oh, so. God! Well, it's serious, serious trouble here. If the general ever finds out the gorgeous Georgina is in fact a strapping six-footer from the rough end of the trench, it could precipitate the fastest execution since someone said, this Guy Fawkes bloke, do we let him off or what? 